Dallas County probate records more than 160 year old, years old were found and they contain inventory lists detailing the property of people who died. The records shed light on how people thought about slaves during that time. Fox 4's Sean Rabb shows us the history of slaves and the heritage of Dallas County as we prepare now to celebrate Juneteenth. Sean. Yeah, Heather, and let me tell you, Dallas County Clerk John Warren only went through these records uh, last weekend and realized the full import of what these recovered records would hold. I mean, um, they're handwritten documents uh, that detail a part of American history. In fact, they make that history come alive. One Negro woman, patience, $900. One Negro boy, Bob, $800. They are names without faces, yet you can almost see them. The dollar amount is the appraised value of that particular slave. Dallas County Clerk John Warren reading a property inventory list and a probate record from the mid-1800s that includes the record of slaves in Dallas County. This particular book and uh, is related to the estate of Francis Daniel, who is also the owner of the Daniels Family Cemetery. An historical marker at Daniel Family Cemetery, now University Park. The first person buried there, identified as a slave named Old Frank in 1850. As you have 200 head of horse, $4,000. In another record, horses have greater value than humans with a darker hue. And then it comes down to 11 Negroes, $2,000. Warren knew slave records were part of the county's history. One black man, Dick, who's a thousand dollars. But didn't know where they were. He looked off and on for them over the last five years. I probably went through about 50 of my, of my probate and deed books, but to no avail. I couldn't find anything because I didn't have a point of reference. Those caught my eye because their spine was unlabeled. Records information officer Allison Olivares stumbled on the history while looking for something else. For her, Eye opening. Just seeing people just itemized right next to pots and pans, it was just really um, emotional and impactful. As it relates to um, two Negro women of said descendant. In one case, a judge ordering slaves to be hired out to others after their owner died. We don't have anything for you to do, but we're going to hire you out to other people that does. And some property inventories included notations about skin color. One yellow girl, Jane, $800. And then it goes back, one black girl, Scarlett, $500. A significant distinction, I think says significant, John Warren. The difference between a black and a yellow is that the yellow is an offspring of the slave owner. This is an area of history that people are trying to erase, trying not to pay too much focus on, and I think it's very, very important. Maybe even more so with Juneteenth, the date Texas slaves learned of their freedom two years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, now becoming a national holiday. I think we need to focus on what, the, what it is we're celebrating. Are we celebrating freedom? Are we celebrating an appreciation of where we have come from? And here's uh, what's great about this going forward. Because these records have first names, uh, researchers would be able to match them to census records from that time and be able to kind of track these people and see who lived, uh, who lived and made it beyond emancipation and how they lived after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed and people in Texas finally learned of that. John Warren, Heather, wants to have these records next step cleaned, preserved and digitized, placed on the county website that everybody can interact with them and experience the history.